Just a quick word to say, the Scotland Rugby Podcast is now available every Tuesday. Join me, Andy Burke, and Tom English for everything you need to know about the world of Scottish rugby. Just head to BBC Sounds and subscribe to the Scotland Rugby Podcast. The Scottish Football Podcast. From BBC Radio Scotland. Welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast with me, Kenny McIntyre. We're joined today by Rory Loy. We'll look back on the week's European action and look ahead to the domestic card this coming weekend. Let's then start, Rory, with Hibs. You were at Easter Road last night. A terrific result for Lee Johnson's side. What did you make of the performance? I thought they were good, Kenny. I really did. I thought they were good value for the win. Uh, The first half an hour, I worried for them slightly. I thought Luzerne controlled the match. Uh, a few tactical tweaks here and there. Um, Dylan Vente and Adam Lafondre dropping back in and their deep line midfielders, I thought, really made a difference um, and cut off their, their main source of creativity in terms of moving the ball forward. They worked their socks off all night. Um, the, the, the crowd really got on side and then they came out the second half. Credit to Lee Johnson taking Ellie Yuhan off. He's one of these players that, you know, he can go missing in a game, but you're always a wee bit worried to take him off because he's capable of something special. But credit to Tilly Johnson, you know, bought on Jordan Obita. He was excellent when he came on and he talked off a magnificent night um, by scoring a good goal and giving Hibs a two-goal cushion going across to Switzerland next week. Goal of the night, of course, came from Joe Newell. He looks a really key player for Hibs, Rory. And also you mentioned Dylan Venti there. Do you see him being a, a big player for Hibs this coming season? Well, it's difficult to... To, to base on, on one performance and you'll hear a lot of that up and down the country uh, with pundits and different things at the moment because it is so early in the season however what he did look to have was a fantastic uh, work ethic and I think in Scotland if first and foremost you're running around um, and you're doing everything you can for the team then you're forgiven for the odd mistake here and there but last night I thought he was excellent I thought he was worth worth his weight in gold in, in terms of uh, his work rate and he got one chance and he took it he didn't need to ask him twice to, to score a goal so um, you know, 46 goals in two seasons um, for for Roda. Now that is the second division in Holland, so in Netherlands. So you would you would imagine it is a step up in class. So whether he can do it in the Premier League here remains to be seen. But all the signs last night were positive. Uh, as for Joe Newell, that's twice I've seen him in, in a week now, and he's been the best player on the pitch for me. He drives the team forward. He can break up the play, but he's creative as well. I have to say, I really enjoyed his interview after the game on on the television <laughs> last night as well. He's a good character, yeah, and he was keen to give quite a lot of insight and detail. I, I really enjoyed the interview, I must say. Um, although he was desperately keen not to talk about the potential of facing Aston Villa, given he's a big Birmingham fan. Um, but no, the, the layoff from Dylan Vente as well, I said it in commentary, and um, John Yule touched on it after the game. It's, it's little things like that that you notice. You know, if you've got a football brain and you're football intelligent, you've got a lot of players out there who maybe, you know, they're assets or their pace and things like that but they just that lack of that a little bit of nous and an understanding of the game you could tell that Vente um, knew how to play the game and it was a lovely layoff for Joe Newell to hit first time and he didn't have to deliver with a with a strike into the top corner Yeah you'd imagine Hibs now strong favourites to go through and get that glamour tie with Aston Villa their attention now will switch to the weekend they're away at Motherwell on Sunday Rory. that looks a tough one to call Yes, it does. I mean, I do think Hibs are favourites um, going over there. However, Luzerne did create chances. They hit the bar. They missed a sitter, um, the substitute villager who just came on. So it's not going to be easy over there. Um, I think Luzerne will score a goal, but it's just whether Hibs can can hold on or, or, or get one themselves. As for Sunday, I think the pressure will be a totally different feel to it on Sunday because they've lost the opening fixture at home. Um, you know, clubs like Hibs need to be winning these home games against against St Mern to to really achieve what the, the fans expect, what the board expect, what the manager expects. Um, come the end of the season, so going away to Stuart Kettlewell's Motherwell side, who have been an excellent since he's come in, is going to be no mean feat. Um, and it's trying to manage that squad ahead of uh, a trip to Switzerland midweek as well. Hearts were also, of course, in European action last night. A Lauren Shanklin goal has them right in the tie with Rosenberg. One of the big talking points, just looking at reaction in social media, was the decision to start Benny Beningame, his first start since March 2022. I don't think he had a great first half. He went off injured at half time. You, you, you'll have experienced this, Rory. He's been out for a long, long period. 
is it strange to you that a, a tie, a European tie away from home is his, is his first start back? Yes. Now, I could understand it if Hearts had went to McDermott Park at the weekend and, and been beaten. And you're almost looking to go, right, we, we need we need to um, get a team on the park and we're going to take that risk to try and perform well and get a result. However, you know, the team performed well at the weekend. They've got the players and the squad depth, you know, at this stage in the season to to put a team out where you're protecting Beningame. I was out for 13 months with a, a double leg break and, you know, my first 90 minutes was came after a, a few substitute appearances, you know, and that was tough going. So I can't imagine what it would have been like getting thrown in from the start uh, without any other appearances. And the fact to get taken off at half time, whether that's precautionary or not, it remains to be seen. But, you know, I think you're asking a lot of the player. And I think that um, in that circumstance, the player's health and well-being needs to be considered. However, that being said, you know, the physios and the experts at Hearts will have a lot more knowledge of where he's at than me. But I, I don't think you need a lot of knowledge to know if a player's been out that length of time, then it's a big ask to throw him into a European away tie uh, the first time of asking. Hearts at home to Kelly on Sunday. They're both, they both, of course, go into this one on the back of good wins uh, on the opening weekend. How do you see this one going? I think it's tough to call. Uh, Derek McInnes has had a few good results at Tynecastle since he, he's been Kamarnock manager. So I don't think it'll be you know plain sailing for Hearts whatsoever. They were absolutely outstanding at the weekend. Um, Kamarnock were really enjoyed watching them. And, uh, you know, I think if, if Derek sets up the same way and Hearts come out at them, you know, there's no reason why they can't go to Tincastle and, and perform uh, in a similar manner as to what they did last week. I don't think there'll be a lot of tweaks and changes from Derek's side. Uh, in point of view, he'll be working on just the little bits and pieces this week. As for Hearts, they had a good start last week, but they have had that trip to Norway and things midweek. So it's a tough one to call. I would be tempted to say that um, there may be a, a share of the spoils in that one. Rangers were much improved in their win over Servette. Although I think that tie is still very much in the balance. I was at Ibrox on Wednesday evening. No doubt, Rory, a lot of improvement still to be made. I think a lot of understanding still to be reached among the players. that didn't seem to gel again, although they were better. David Martindale was sitting behind us at Ibrox. And he'll think, no doubt, this is a good time to be facing Rangers. Yes. And I think he'll have taken confidence from, I'm sure he's watched extensive highlights of the game last Saturday, um, or he maybe even managed to catch the game. You know, they really struggled against, you know, a block, of, uh, two blocks of four or a block of four and a block of five. And that's not in any way, shape or form to say that Kamarnik set up to defend because the way the game transpired, that, that didn't really happen. But I think as well, you know, you see Servette getting sent out to 10 men. That's when Rangers struggled because they couldn't, break down that defensive line. I think the game next week will shoot them. I really do. I fancy them to score a goal and get through the tie. I think they'll have a more difficult time on Saturday than they were against Livingston at home than they will have um, next midweek. I know that sounds crazy to say, a, a European away tie, but you know that's kind of been proven over the last few years. Uh, I think the game will be open next Wednesday, uh, next Tuesday, sorry, and I think that'll suit Rangers. I think if Livingston come to frustrate Rangers, if they don't get an early goal, confidence could drop because as you say Kenny you know there was there was glimpses there was moments however basic errors Dessers for me just it's not so much the fitness thing it's not the gelling thing giving the ball away under no pressure whatsoever at times uh, Lammers shows glimpses he, he looks very very similar to Tillman I must say um, the, way he, the way he is on the pitch it looks like he could score a goal should have scored a goal Um and Danilo, for me, again, picked up good positions, but real lack of quality when it came to one-on-one -on -one situations in that final pass. Listen, it is still the time of the season where you give them the benefit of the doubt. However, Mark, uh, Michael Beale spoke after the um, commandment game and basically said Ton Cantwell was, was going to play in the European game, and that was always the plan. You know, we often hear of managers and we, we yawn a little bit all oh, one game at a time. That's how he needs to approach it because he's looked at the Servette game before the commandment game. And he's took his eye off the ball, in my opinion, from what he said. Um, and he's planning for games way ahead. So I think get your team, best team on the pitch on Saturday and try and win the match first and foremost. Well, let's hear the thoughts of the Rangers manager, Michael Beale. He spoke with the media earlier today. Well, we've had a little bit more time together on the training pitch. Obviously, it was a, it was a sore one last week, but it was a positive uh, 
result midweek. It was the most important thing was to win the game. We could, we know we could have won it better, and we know that last weekend we had chances as well. So it's clear that we're creating good moments, and uh, the most important thing is we keep creating, and over time we'll take them. It's the start of a new season, and we've played two games, and I get that we lost the first one, but it was a good, it was a good performance Wednesday, and off the back end of last season, we were we were in a good place. So. It's important we don't go uh, overboard, and but it's certainly important that we win this weekend. Well, the squad's been reloaded, if you like. It's uh, a lot of the the ideas are same, but it's reloaded. We these players come in from different leagues and different countries, and their family are settling and they're in and out of hotels, moving into new places. So you have to take the human element, but. From what I'm seeing from the players, I'm happy. It's just, you know, they're just into a new club. It's, it's intense here, uh, as I'm sure they're already aware. But every day they'll get stronger. I've got a lot of faith in them. Is that just part and parcel of being a professional footballer nowadays that when you do move, the elite players when they certainly move around the world, that mm -hmm. you go into different environments, but there's not a long honeymoon period. You really do. Do you need to hit the ground running pretty quickly? Yeah, of course you do, because you know the, everyone has a, a hopes and aims for the season, and we know our first month in Scotland, there's a lot to play for, both in the league with European football and the, the League Cup as well. I think the thing, the big thing to remember is, you know, we lost all of our forward players, if you like, and we've changed them all, so that's going to take a little bit of time. The thoughts there of Michael Beale. Full coverage of that game on Sports Sound tomorrow. It's a busy weekend of action. Two of your former clubs face off on Saturday, Rory. You've got to make St Mirren strong favourites to beat Dundee. Yes, I would. I would. Uh, the result last week at Easter Road, I watched them dismantle Forfar at home as well. And, you know, there's absolutely no reason to suggest why. St Mern wouldn't perform well tomorrow Dundee will be up against it you know I think Tony Docherty would have been happy enough with that result last week you know a point on the opening day um, is no disaster however I think a trip to Paisley at the moment is a really really tough one and yeah I think Dundee will, will go there you know buoyant and good enough spirits and things but I covered that game twice last year uh, sorry a couple of years ago and uh, when Dundee were in the Premier League and it was a little bit scrappy at times uh, there was one goal in both games I do expect St Mirren's quality to shine through because I think they've improved a, a hell of a lot since then. And yeah, I would make St Mirren, I would have to tend to agree with your way of thinking there and make St Mirren strong favourites in that one. Speaking of quality, though, we spoke a lot last season the likes of Mark O'Hara and Curtis Main. We also spoke about Ryan Strain. Again, he just seems to have come on again. He's a quality player. Are you surprised that St Mirren still have him? Um, I think if he has a good six months in January, clubs may may have a look. Uh, maybe they just want to see if he, you know, he started well. He was part of a team that was doing well, and it was just everything came together for him at the right time. But I think he's, if he has another good six months, especially in the bigger games, then he will turn heads, um, and and people will start asking questions about him. You know that wing back position at the moment, Kenny. I mean, in in football these days, it's one of the most important positions on the pitch they're all important of course but so many mm -hmm. teams play out wide width get balls in the box and Ryan Strain is, is an athlete he can get up and down he's fit he's very much suited to Scottish football um, and he's got good quality as well he can deliver the ball into the box um, and you know the couple of games I've seen him this season he's been a standout uh, and, he, and he, he's going to go from strength to strength in my opinion so another good six months in January um, could be the time where St Mern start to I have to pick up the phone and listen to some calls about him. It seems a strange one to say, Rory, uh, going into the second weekend of the Premiership campaign, but this already looks like a huge game for St Johnston and Dingwall on Saturday. Very poor, of course, in the League Cup. A home defeat last weekend against Hearts uh, and the tip of many of our pundits to finish bottom this campaign. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for them um, at the weekend, I think, that long trip up to, to Dingwall, where, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit of a cliche, but you, you do need to fight and scrap at times uh, in, the, in the Premier League. And they're going to have to do that. And when you're low in confidence, it's not particularly easy. And as much as Ross County were beaten last week at uh, Celtic Park, they performed well, they scored two goals. There's reasons to be optimistic for Malky Mackay. I think he's recruited well. I like some of his signings and, and Kyle Turner. Uh, Scott Allardyce I think they've got a squad of players that if you can keep Eamon Brophy fit then 
I think they've got, you know, a, 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 the makings um, of of a good side there, especially with Jan Danda as the catalyst creativity wise. So Stephen McLean's going to need to take his team up there, and what they need to do is do the simple things right, build their confidence up slowly but surely, and see if they can get a result. Because if it does end in defeat, you know, a home defeat against Hearts, followed by an away defeat against Ross County, you know, the, the fixtures that ideally you'd be looking to take points from. Of course, you want to take points every week, but that's not necessarily realistic for a club like St. Johnson. But I just feel like a defeat uh, the weekend with the inexperience Stephen McLean's got, you know, it's it's a big, big game for them. We'll have coverage of that game on Open All Mics, on Sports Sound on Saturday. No doubt the game of the weekend takes place on Sunday at Petorge. It should be an absolute cracker, this one, Rory. Aberdeen against Celtic. Yeah, really look forward to that, I must say. Um, I think Aberdeen are a different animal under uh, Barry Robson. I think that's been proven in the time he's been there. And, you know, Celtic going up there, I, I do I do think Celtic will win the match, Kenny. I do. I just think the spine of their team, I've touched on it already, has, has remained the same. Joe Hart and goals, who, OK, is guilty of the odd error here and there, but is a good shot stopper, good goalkeeper, good pedigree. And then you've got Carter Vickers in front of him. You know, Hitati, Turnbull coming onto a game as well, potentially after a good pre-season and a couple of goals last week. Uh, McGregor, of course, Kyogo up front. I just think the spine of the team is so strong that whilst I expect Aberdeen to be competitive and in the match, I do, and they'll fancy their chances of scoring. Duke and Miofsky up front. You know, Celtic have conceded goals in pre-season and a couple last week. I just think it's a, a little bit a case of almost the Harlem Globetrotters, you know, we'll, we'll outscore you type thing. And I think Celtic are capable of scoring on their day, two, three, four goals anywhere in the country. You know what it's like, Rory, when you're in that studio, the Sports Sound studio at the weekend, it's busy, you don't get a chance to really take everything in. It's only when I got home and, and I watched sports scene and I'd spoken a bit about it with Leanne and the programme about it, but Kyogo, perhaps a slightly different role at the weekend, dropping a bit deeper, but we've spoken a lot about his finishing, of course, and his movement. The sea's touch, watching that, you know, and the highlights, he's a special, special player, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I've... I've been banging on about Kyogo, you know, not long into his tenure at Celtic about how sharp he is, how creative he is. And I know myself from being a forward player, that first touch, especially inside the box, he gets his shot away so quickly compared to other players. And it's three half seconds, Kenny, and the chance is gone. Kyogo, his, his first touch is deft. His finishing is of the highest quality. His movement is of the highest quality. You know, I've said previously on, on Sports Sound, I think he could be part of a, a squad in the top six teams down in England. I, re I really do. Whether he would play week in, week out, I don't know. But he's, he's so intelligent. He's so intelligent. And he's such a good football player. And it's, in my opinion, it is the best bit of business Celtic will do this year, um, tying him down on a long-term deal. Because I think he is superb. And I genuinely think he's the best player to have played in, in Scotland since Henrik Larson. I really do. Since Henrik Larson, not including Henrik Larson. Um that's how good I think he is. Yeah, that no doubt. That's huge praise. He is a special, special player. I just finally, in terms of Aberdeen, what, what's the key to success for getting something out of this game for Barry Robson? Well, I mean, we watched Aberdeen last year in their first home match against Celtic. You know, shut up shop. They had literally no attacking options whatsoever. Um, they had them on the pitch, but you know, were so deep. And Willie Miller at the time was extremely critical and quite rightly so about, you know, even if they got a nil-nil, that's that's not how Aberdeen play, even against Celtic. So they, he needs to get the balance right, Barry Robson, because Celtic are dangerous. Of course they are. Um, and I think um, if he watches the game last week and how Kamalik performed, you know, that structure, uh, that discipline. Um, I spoke about spaces between uh, players you know, they're so quick and dynamic Celtic that you need to be able to communicate, close down, your distances need to be right. And by that, what I mean is, um, you know, between fullbacks and centre-backs and things like that, you can't have Kyogo dropping into those spaces. You need to be able to shut them off and snuff them out, but you need to be able to break quickly as well. Aberdeen have got the players to do it and they've shown that under Barry Robson, so they're capable of doing it. It's just whether it can all come together on the day because if a couple of players aren't at it, then Celtic will win the match. If Aberdeen can get it all right on the day. They still might not win the match, but they'll give themselves a good chance of doing so because I really like the squad they've got up there. 
Yeah, really looking forward to that one. That's it for today. My thanks to Rory Loy Sports, and we'll have all the action, all the drama right across the weekend, kicking off at two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Bye for now. The Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Radio Scotland.